Hi folks, in this video we're going to be discussing what a cowboy coder is, why you should not be one, and what a modern WordPress workflow looks like using the Roots framework. So let's dive right in. Roots.io is the address, and when you get there you're going to see uh, the first title says Roots helps you build better WordPress sites faster. Open source tools for WordPress application development improve your workflow by using Trellis, Bedrock, and Sage together, or just use them separately. So what is Roots? What is Trellis? What is Bedrock? And what is Sage? Roots was originally the Sage theme, which is a WordPress starter theme. They originally uh, were just a theme, and then the team of Roots got together and started to extend their understanding of what a proper WordPress uh, theme development should look like into what a workflow should look like altogether from the local dev environment to the production server to how WordPress is even structured uh, by using Bedrock. So Roots is now the organization that controls these three products and Sage is a starter theme and when I say starter theme there's nothing fancy it's not a premium theme you're not going to get a bunch of bells and whistles you're actually going to get exactly the opposite of that. You're going to get the most optimized blank slate you can ask for when starting a new custom development uh, for WordPress. And what I mean by that is when you first load up Sage, you're literally just going to see the title, you're going to see the Hello World uh, WordPress post, and beyond that, you're not going to get any special styling or anything along uh, that nature. Let's start with theme, and then I'll talk a little bit about uh, Bedrock and, and Trellis right after. So with Sage, as you can see here, it says it's the best WordPress starter theme with a modern front-end development workflow. Uh, advanced workflow, write style sheets with SAS, automatically check your JavaScript for errors, optimize images, enable synchronized browser testing, and more with Gulp. This has actually since been changed in the newest version of Sage 9, which is yet to be released uh, in a beta. It's still in alpha as far as uh, this video is concerned. And we're switching to Yarn in future releases, but in general, the idea behind this is that you're going to be able to write code with nested styles uh, using SAS. You're going to automatically check your JavaScript for errors before you're deploying. You're optimizing images and you're even synchronizing browser testing uh, through the use of whether it's Gulp or Yarn. Uh, by using Sage theme, it comes packaged with all of these nice shortcuts for you. Add front end packages with Bower to automatically get compiled into your theme assets or that get automatically compiled into your theme assets. Sage comes with the latest version of Bootstrap. So along with uh, these kind of advancements here, you're also going to get Bootstrap uh, to build upon. So obviously, if you're not familiar with Bootstrap, I'm not going to cover that in this video, but you're going to have the Bootstrap grid system and, and a number of the Bootstrap uh, components uh, to shortcut some of your, your WordPress web development. Beyond that, you then have Bower, which is also going to be soon to be replaced with Webpack. It's an asset manager, which means that you can pull in third-party assets uh, into your installation of WordPress without you having to manually download and install in the right directory. You don't want to do that. You want to do that using something like Webpack or previously something like Bower. Minimal HTML5 templates, so it comes with the markup from the HTML5 boilerplate, which is always nice to have. And then the th theme wrapper is really the, the thing that most people are probably going to spend most of their time trying to wrap their heads around and we will talk more about that in one of our future videos. But for now, the theme wrapper just keeps things very dry as they say and if you want to jump over to the roots.io forward slash sage URL, click on this link here. Uh, it'll actually show you a little bit more about what that dry variable means and in, in general it just means don't repeat yourself and by using the theme wrapper it allows you to have some very clean code. It allows you to be very modular in all of your templates. Um, so you're not, again, writing the same code over and over again. So this will probably be the biggest hurdle to jump over when using the Sage theme, but it, once you learn it, it, it really is a, a lifesaver. So moving on, scrolling down, you can also see there is a theme development with Sage book that I highly recommend that you check out to learn more about the inner workings of Sage, but we are going to cover um, the details found within most of this book as well in, in future videos as well. So in a nutshell, you have Sage being the starter theme that... I personally love to start every single website with if it's a custom build, if it's a, you know, if it's a theme based build for a client that might not have the capital to invest into a complete web development uh, from the ground up, then you might be okay with using a premium theme, which by the way, works just fine within the trellis and bedrock structure, which we're going to talk more about soon. But Sage really is uh, a huge sh shortcut. It's going to ensure that you're 
you're writing proper code, both in JavaScript and in, in CSS, is going to also make sure that your images are optimized, that your load times are improved, that the security is also improved. Uh, it's it's an amazing uh, you know starting point for any WordPress development. So that is Sage, and we will talk more about that again in a future video. Bedrock is a second product or package within the Roots uh, Corporation here, where we're talking a little bit about um, simply taking the standard reversed logic of putting everything that WordPress has inside of its own folder. All of your themes live inside that same WordPress, you know, WP content folder. Your plugins live in that same folder. Your your uploads live inside that same folder. What what they're doing here, what Roots is doing here with the Bedrock structure is they're saying let's let's break that out. Let's give it its own uh, directory and let's call that directory the app directory. So better WordPress project structure, the uh, organization of Bedrock is similar to putting WordPress in its own subdirectory, but with some improvements, in, uh, including renaming WP content to app. So what they're doing here is they're looking at WordPress as a more standard uh, app application that you might interface with something like Ruby or JavaScript, where you have most of your, your modified components to the framework that you might be building within instead of its own directory, in this case, the app directory. So what will that look like? In the end, you'll have something like this where you're breaking out your configuration. So let's say your, your WP content or your WP config.php folder um, file, I should say that you're normally editing. You can now find that within the application.php file environments. You can find settings for each of these environments, whether or not you want to show errors or, or um, not show errors on a development environment versus staging versus production. And then under your web folder, this is where, where you're going to find your WordPress install living in its own WP folder. And all of your assets that you're going to be modifying are now uh, in this child folder called app. So all your plugins, your themes, and your uploads, these can be found in their own folder now, which means that you have a lot more control over rolling back versions or you know uh, upgrading versions of WordPress and not worrying about any of your actual application uh, modified files being updated within that process. So just very, very, very nice and very intuitive, especially if you're coming from um, you know a modern proper workflow within a modern uh, proper development stack, something maybe focused on Ruby or JavaScript or something along those lines, WordPress will now feel a little bit more at home for you. Dependency management using Composer. So again, instead of you uh, pulling in, manually downloading and, and dropping in dependencies, they're going to be using Composer uh, through Bedrock to automatically grab all of these dependencies. It's going to keep your uh, repository, which we'll talk more about because every website that you're developing you should have a private repository for that using something like GitHub or something like Bitbucket to store your repository and eventually deploy to your staging and your production environments from those repositories. But in any case, to keep that repository light, keep it uh, more organized, we're going to use Composer to pull in these dependencies on a WordPress website setup or WordPress website deploy. Easy WordPress configuration, environment specific configuration files and environment variables in the .m file. So again, you're going to find that you have a lot of uh, configuration actually handled through a separate uh, folder here in the config folder file, as well as within the uh, .n file that they're referencing here as well. Enhanced security, which is always good. Um, we're using a bcrypt instead of your standard MD5 hash. Um, they talk quite a bit about why we're doing that, why they're pushing people in that direction in general, just because WordPress is being a bit of a stick in the mud uh, using this outdated, uh, vulnerable MD, uh, MD5 uh, hash here. They're moving away from that using this bcrypt, and you don't have to even worry about that again. Another nice feature of jumping on the Roots bandwagon is they kind of lead the charge, and you just get to take advantage of all of their innovations as they're as they're making them. So again, it comes enhanced with bcrypt out of the the box so you don't have to worry about that and then lastly and maybe most importantly in my opinion uh, the product within roots that has really changed the way that that we develop websites uh, completely uh, is the trellis component now normally what you have uh, in a cowboy coding type of situation is you have somebody who is on their local dev they might have installed something like map if they're on a mac uh, maybe something like zamp or wamp if they're on a windows machine they're creating these local development environments. They're spinning up their, their server and then they're installing WordPress and kind of going to town. The problem with that is that if you're A, by yourself and you're working on a local development uh, on your local machine and you're eventually pushing that to a staging environment and eventually then to a production environment that 
all three of those environments could uh, potentially be completely agnostic of one another. They might have different server settings. Uh, they might be completely different, you know, operating systems as a whole. And what Trellis tries to do here is create what they call perfect parity, which means if I'm on my local dev environment, by using something called Vagrant along with VirtualBox, we can create virtual servers on our local machine that are provisioned with specific server settings that once we go to provision and deploy our site to a staging and production environment, staging for the client to review and production for the actual live website, we're going to provision those servers with the exact same server settings as what we just used on our local dev environment. Now for us as a digital agency, that was huge. And the reason that that was huge is we might have a developer working remote on a Windows machine. We might have a, a local developer working on a Mac machine. Uh, they might be working together. One person's working on one thing, the other working on another. We're uh, committing to a version control uh, system like Git or Bitbucket, which is great. But then what you might run into is on deploy of that code, that master branch uh, within that Git repository is being deployed to your staging or production server. You might find that that what the person on the remote Windows machine was working on uh, might not work at all on the specific staging environment that's based on Ubuntu uh, because they were using, you know, maybe an Apache server. We have Nginx on on the staging server you're going to run into issues like that where, you know, the quote unquote, it worked on my machine, it should work on staging. I'm not quite sure why it's not. Type of conversations can be completely eradicated by using Trellis. So with that scenario out of the way, in a nutshell, again, we have the ability to create that perfect parity so that my local dev machine has the exact same server settings as my staging and production servers. So that really is it in a nutshell. It's boiled down to that, but there's so many very, very complicated, but but very, very helpful things that are pretty straightforward for you to just take advantage of uh, by using Trellis out of the box. So let's go ahead and dive a little bit into Trellis. Use the website as a guide to, to talk a little bit more. So WordPress development and production servers done right, Vagrant Virtual Machine for development. So as I mentioned, uh, using Vagrant, you can automatically create a self-contained virtual machine using VirtualBox. So you would have to install VirtualBox and Vagrant on your local dev environment, and we will cover that in a later video. Uh, and what they're saying here uh, as almost a tagline is stop cluttering up your uh, host machine with software like MAMP and use the same software you, you would in production. So that virtual machine that you're spinning up on your local uh, development environment, so your, your local computer, that is being created through Vagrant and it's using VirtualBox as your container system. Uh, what Vagrant's going to do is provision that virtual box with specific server settings. So everything from the PHP version to, you know, specific firewalls, maybe mail server settings, all of those things are going to get set up on your local dev environment. Once you have those set up in your local dev environment and you have your, your local development environment up and running and you're starting to code, what you're going to find is that when you're eventually ready to push that to staging, all you simply have to do is create your staging server, ideally through DigitalOcean. And we're going to talk about DigitalOcean more, but you can use something like Amazon Web Services. It works out of the box with Amazon Web Services as well. Uh, but we're probably going to focus mainly on DigitalOcean just because that's what Roots tends to focus on. And DigitalOcean, honestly, is just a great host. It allows you to create uh, servers for about $5 a month. You can destroy the server. You can scale up the server. You can add lo load balancers to the server. Um, and if you are using DigitalOcean, uh, definitely continue to do so and continue to follow these and you'll be right at home. If you're not, uh, please use the break fix link directly in the footer of this video where you can find uh, you will get a $10 uh, discount off of your first server when you are using that link. So please feel free to go ahead and click that link and uh, take advantage of that discount. But either way, um, yes, that was an affiliate plug. Either way, moving on. Um, whatever your server uh, eventually is, you can create that server through DigitalOcean. You can create that through Amazon Web Services. But the idea is that you provision that server using Trellis. Uh, which is built on Ansible, and you provision that server to have the exact same server settings as your local dev. So speaking of Ansible, the complete WordPress server, you'll get a complete WordPress server running uh, all your software you need configured according to the best practices. So as I mentioned previously, what's really nice about Roots is you just get what you should be doing. You, you get out of the box uh, innovation, you get out of the box probably the newest trend setting, uh, things that are going to benefit you and your clients the most. And you get to jump on the bandwagon that is Roost.io, uh, a team of very talented individuals who are making waves in the, the WordPress community when there really isn't a lot of waves being being made by a lot of people. So um, definitely a good team to 
to let lead the way. And again, by doing so, uh, using using Trellis specifically, you're going to put away those ways of old cowboy coding by using Trellis. All of this is powered by Ansible uh, for configuration management, and you don't use brittle and confusing bash scripts to worry about commands you found in copy and paste. Ansible provides descriptive modules for common tasks. So again, uh, Ansible is going to be playing a big role into uh, the provisioning of your local dev environment and your staging and eventually production environment. Um, out of the box, Ansible is going to set up all of those really awesome security, speed optimization. Um, you know, they're going to make recommendations of using Nginx instead of Apache for, for speed optimization re reasons once more. So again, uh, we'll talk more about Ansible in a later video and talk a little bit about how the playbooks work and, and how exactly we go about creating a new server on something like DigitalOcean, provisioning that server, and eventually deploying our local dev environment to that staging and production server. Provision a remote uh, server and deploy it uh, with a single command. Trellis is all about uh, development and production parity, as we talked about. What does this mean? Your development virtual machine, your production are as similar as possible. This gives the confidence to know that uh, if your WordPress site works in, in development, it will also work in production, and you can deploy with confidence. So I think that that pretty much summarizes what we've been saying throughout this this video here in that that perfect parity is created and you hopefully eradicate that issue with it worked on my machine and I'm not quite sure why it's not working on staging or it's not not working on development. You're creating just almost a flawless uh, workflow within your WordPress development uh, runway here. So uh, that is roots.io, that is Sage, Bedrock, and Trellis. And again, we're going to dive into additional videos uh, within Roots and how you exactly firstly get your development environment set up, how we then uh, configure that development environment, how we use Sage within that development environment, how to work with Bedrock within that environment. Once we get done with that, we're going to move into uh, additional talks about how to then create that staging environment on DigitalOcean, how to create the production environment on DigitalOcean, how to provision both, and then deploy to both of those as well. Uh, the database we will talk about, uh, we have WPCLI that we're using within the Roots framework as well that makes interfacing with database um, database is just really, really easy. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about, about Migrate DB Pro, which is an amazing premium WordPress plugin that uh, I highly recommend as well. And uh, that about wraps it up for this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave some comments. And uh, I'll be back soon to talk more about Sage, Bedrock, and Trellis and how you can stop being a cowboy coder and start to move into a more modern WordPress workflow.